want to call to order the Amberley Village Council meeting of January 13th, 2020. Please call the roll. Richard Bardak. Here. Peg Conway. Here. Ed Hattenbach. Here. Alita K. Mine. Here. Tom Muthing. Here. Ray Warren. Here. Natalie Wolf. Here. Scott Larmer. Here. Kevin McDonough. Here. Chief Wallace. Here. Brick K. Here. And if everyone could please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone, uh, and Happy New Year to all. Uh, first item on the agenda is our minutes from our, we have three minutes uh, for approval. First, our regularly scheduled meeting of December 9. Those minutes were circulated, and there were some changes, and those were circulated. Are there any further changes to those minutes? If not, the minutes of December 9, 2019 can, are approved. Uh, the next is our special Wait, council meeting. Tom, I'm sorry. I just remembered I did have something, and I couldn't remember what it was, but I do now. I'm, okay. Um, I, I did paper copy. Sorry. It's in a work session. Oh, you, something you this, said. This, uh, oh, we okay. haven't gotten to the work right. session. You want the work yeah, session? Yeah, I want the work session. Okay. So the, the next uh, set of minutes is our special council meeting of December 9. Actually, that was on that, the 17th, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, right before the work session. Yeah. The, it's a special count. The, the minutes are, the minutes, it's the agenda that's wrong. Uh, it's the special council session of December 17th, 2019. Those minutes were circulated. This was the special uh, meeting to, uh, to address the uh, EMS contract that uh, the village entered into with the city of Reading. Are there any further changes to those minutes? If not, we can consider those minutes approved. And finally, we have the council work session of December 17th, 2019, and those minutes were circulated. Are there any further changes to those? Well, I would suggest um, on the top of page two, which, uh, which is page 13, it's 2 and 13. It says, Ms. Wolf stated council was working on zoning, et cetera. Mr. Muthing emphasized that residents do not want residential development at Amberley Green, so this is why zoning is being changed. I think that you don't mean that in the broad sense. Did, right. Correct? Right. Did they, residents don't want one acre residences. Because then you say, he stated a judge required Amberley Green to be zoned residence A, and again, another section you talk about residence A, which is one acre lots. So what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I, I, would, I would change your words to state what you mean. Okay, 100% residential development? Yeah, Mr. Muthing emphasized the residents do not want 100% residential development at Amberley Green. No. That's just the, we didn't motion anything else. So, well, no. Uh, so I hereby move that we approve the uh, council work session minutes of December 17, 2019, as amended. Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we uh, approve the uh, council work session minutes of December 19, December 17, 2019, as amended. Or is there any discussion? If not, it has been moved and seconded that we approve the uh, council work session minutes of December 17, 2019 as amended. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Be it noted that that passes unanimously. And that, can, that means all the minutes are approved and we're up to date on the approval of minutes. Uh, we'll now move on to the finance report for November 2019. Thank you, Mayor. On the November 2019 expenses and revenues. The report has been included in your packet. I'll first talk about the revenues <clears throat> for the general fund. The earnings tax uh, totaled uh, for the month of November $123,000. 
This is up about 24% from November of 2018's collection of $99,000. So overall, the village has collected $2.7 million, which was uh, our estimate for 2019, with one month remaining on that. So <clears throat> the uh, local government fund netted $5,500 this, this past month. Our total revenue for the month of November was $255,000. The revenue estimate for the general fund overall was $4.9 million, and we've exceeded that as of the end of November. So we're over 100% collection rate on revenues. The expenses for the month of November for the general fund totaled $425,000, and the total expenditures to date, $4.4 million. Our budget for 2019 was $5.3 million, so the village has expended 82% of the budget as of the end of November. This leaves us with an unencumbered general fund balance at $5.8 million. That concludes my report. Are there any questions for the manager? If not, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, and we have another a number of residents and citizens to speak to council. First, uh, Whitney Vickers. Um, I'm Whitney Vickers. I'm with the 2020 Census Bureau, and I wanted to come today and tell you all about the importance of the census. Um, every 10 year, the United States government has decided that we need to count everyone that is living in America. This helps with accurate representation in uh, Congress and the House of Representatives. It helps with health providers and the um, spread of disease um, information. It also helps with disasters letting a fire rescue know how many people they need to send per area. And it also helps with public information like genealogy. Um, last census, 2010, 30% of Hamilton County residents didn't um, report on the census. So we are estimating that the loss was about $1,800 per person per year. So it's millions of dollars that Hamilton County alone lost out on. Um, we're also looking for enumerators that's people who are census takers. It's paying 21 to $26 an hour. It's a temporary position, so don't anybody quit your day jobs. Um, <laughs> it's flexible. You can make your own schedule. You make your own hours. Uh, minimum 15 hours a week, um, up to 40, no overtime. So that's sometimes a blessing and sometimes a curse. And we are also looking for donated training space to train the enumerators. So anybody has any questions for me? Any questions? Nope. Well, thank you. Thank uh, you. And, if, and again, you have our contact information. If yes, you sir. have any issues that you need us to help with, we're more than happy to. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next person, Brenda Schoenfield. In December, I was driving up. Um, Galbraith Road, and I passed Amberly Green, and you know how much I love Amberly Green. And there was a light snow that day, and it was particularly beautiful. And I started thinking that I've lived in two beautiful cities, Savannah, Georgia, and Amberly Village. And in Savannah, Georgia, the focal point of the city is a beautiful fountain in Forsyth Park, and it's a gathering place for the citizens. And people come there, they sit around the fountain, there are benches, and it's a place where people walk their dogs, and even the, um, the drinking fountains have dog fountains at the bottom. And it's always a treat to go back there and see. I've also sat in the square at Hyde Park and enjoyed that fountain and the one in Marymount. I feel that we have an opportunity to do something beautiful with Amberly Green before it is destroyed and the little bit of payroll tax we will get from the minimum wage counselors is not going to meet the expenses of what it's going to cost to destroy it 
and all the asphalt and concrete. I wish that you could consider how beautiful a fountain would be there with surrounding benches and people socializing there. And I feel that somebody might donate the fountain. It could be a beautiful legacy to the village. And at the zoo, you can donate a bench for $1,500, have a plaque put on it. Please consider this before you destroy it. It is too pretty a piece of land to turn into a nursing home, Section 8 housing, whatever will happen to it in the future. There's not always going to be this council, and the next one might not be as environmental friendly. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you. Uh, next, Susan Glazer. I attended the council zoning work session back on December 17th. And my question to you is, once the zoning language is crafted to your liking, what is the process after that to take it to the point of council adoption? And if you would please provide the steps and the proposed timeline, I'd appreciate it, not just for me, but for all of the residents of Amberley Village. When I ask these questions, it's not just my question. These are questions that I get from talking to different residents in, in Amberley. Another question that I have for everyone, if not everyone, for residents in the village, is when is the traffic study going to be completed to assess the impact, once again, to assess the impact of the JCC campus expansion? This should be done before any further action on the JCC Amberley Green proposal. That's it. So do you have answers for that? Well, the one thing I would point out, and I don't know if you got a copy, I did put in the back the guidelines for addressing council and committees. One of the things, and this is part of our charter, and I'm, you know, I think people should read this before addressing. One of the things you're not permitted to do is ask questions. So, but uh, we all, we me, are, we are working on to address all those, but, but you know, it, it's all part of the process and we, we're working to get answers. Okay, I apologize, so I, I didn't know that. I'll read did, that. Did, if you didn't get a copy, I will be glad to provide a copy, but there were, I put a stack of them back there, and I, I'm not sure they're still back there, but do, do get a copy if, if you did. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, next, Steve Cushard. I'm Steve Cushard, 3205 North White Tree Circle. Then I'm glad you clarified the question point, because then that explains why the last six months, when I've asked questions, nobody's answered the question. So that's, that makes it clear. If we'd have done that, we may have saved somebody lots of time. So I'm not going to ask a question, but I'm still an advocate for a comprehensive land use master plan. There are so many benefits to do this before we move forward with anything. Uh, I just don't understand why we don't want to proceed forward with that. Because a master plan determines our future vision, it becomes our policy, it provides justification for decisions regarding zoning, everything falls under the master plan. Right now it seems like we're, we're doing it just in reverse. We're, we're talking about zoning changes with the JCC without a master plan. Uh, quick comment on zoning. Rezoning of a small parcel. I did some research, went to some professional planning websites and some other uh, <coughs> academic things. They're saying a rezoning of a small parcel of land within the limits of another zone when not done in accordance with a comprehensive land use plan or when arbitrary or discriminatory is not a preferred practice because of implica implications of favoritism. So it seems to me like this is exactly what we're doing with the JCC. Now I pulled a whole list of some key points from this, some professional planning websites and a few other things. 
I don't know if I should go through this. You know, I'd be happy to share this with all council members that talk about the benefits of a master plan. Um, things like the plan provides continuity and guidance moving forward. It's a means by which the community can balance competing private interests and achieve the best benefits for the community as a whole. It allows communities to plan development in a way that protects public investments and valued resources. It provides guidance for shaping the appearance of a community. It promotes economic development. I'm, I'm assuming we still want economic development. It provides justification for decisions and becomes a public policy document. By doing that, it eliminates confusion and sets the strategy so there are no questions regarding what can and cannot be done on the property. Finally, it sets a vision for the future. It provides citizens an opportunity to brainstorm, debate, and discuss the future of our community. And a key point here, subsequent decisions that are consistent with the plan's policies are less likely to become embroiled in, in public controversy. So I guess with what I just said, with everything in mind, why, I'm gonna ask a question, why don't you feel we, we shouldn't have a master plan moving forward? Because one of the other things I read when I was doing some of this research says master plan communities succeed in a large part due to number one the developer Amberley doesn't have a developer we know that number two a well executed plan i don't see a plan and number three sound fiscal responsibility a uh, dollar a year some of the other things we talked about uh, that's it okay any questions or comments i just that's fine. Um, I just would like to comment on the process and the restriction on not asking questions. It's not that you can't ask a question. It's that we cannot engage in dialogue from this format. That's not the purpose of our meeting. And I'd like to assure the speakers who have come several times with questions that the questions are being folded into the work that we are doing. We are answerable to the entire village, not just the people that take the time to come regularly. And so it's it's a big process, not a back and forth behind this desk. I mean, that, that's how I see it, so. Right, and I understand too, this yeah. this isn't really interactive where we can really sit down and have a really interactive discussion. It's just the way the forum is. Um, I just wanted to add something that uh, what Ms. Conway just shared. Um, obviously, we also have committee meetings where everyone's invited, where there is certainly a lot of a lot more where there is back and forth in terms of uh, discussion of uh, of any and all issues in the village, and, and you're aware of that. Um, I just wanted to uh, comment on 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 one thing that you shared, and I don't, and and that is several years ago, about ten years ago, my understanding is we had a uh, a long range planning commission that dealt with um, uh, what what residents in the village wanted to do on the green, and there were a variety of opinions shared. Um, and a consensus was drawn in terms of the kinds of things residents wanted. But to be very clear, a long-range planning committee uh, output report is guidance, okay? Uh, it's not set in law, and, um, but having said that, I would argue that a lot of what we've been doing, uh, with the, that is what the land committee's been doing over the last, whatever, five, six years, has always uh, taken into account uh, what residents expressed during that process of the long-range planning. So we're not really we're not really out of bounds in terms of what what village residents uh, expressed at that time. Okay, so that's just something I wanted to share. So we're not coming from left field in terms of you know whatever might be on the table. Well, one of the things I've noticed too when I when I did some research, every, most of the places I visited on the web. They had public policy guidelines where they actually had said, here's, if we don't have a master plan, here's our goals and objectives, here's our strategies, here's what we hope to do. I don't see anything like that published that's accessible today regarding the Emberley Green JCC development process. So that's why I keep asking plans because I, under, I remember the long range plan, but I don't see anything today. Well, the long range plan is today. That's still effective that it, it was adopted by council and it's never been rescinded by council. Yeah, and superseded. Okay, thank you. Okay, Colin Driscoll, please. Well, that's sort of, uh, you know, it's a 
to what I was at Colin Driscoll's 6600 Ridge Road. Uh, Congressman Brad Wenstrup sent Steve and I a letter in late December encouraging us to stay involved and to continue to fight for our community. So that's kind of what we're doing. So with that said, I've att attended three council work sessions regarding proposed zoning on Amberley Green. As I understand the process, once zoning uh, language is crafted, it goes to the Planning Commission where it's reviewed. The, the, they then hold a public hearing, possibly modify the language, and then make a recommendation to council. Two of the five Planning Commission members, Scott Wolf and Rick Lauer, were on the original AG Citizens Advisory Committee tasked to study options for Amberley Green after we purchased it. The work product of this advisory committee was utilized when the long range plan was formed to determine development options for Amberley Green and the North site. The committee's ideas were presented to a gathering of 150 residents for input and refinement prior to presenting the final report to council. As you mentioned, the final report was adopted by council the following month. Several years later, when council sought to partner with a qualified development group in 2016, they wondered why we were utilizing the long range plan adopted five years earlier. A majority on council at that vote either said it was out of date, unrealistic, and not market tested. Uh, uh, the chairman of the uh, Planning Commission and the uh, Zoning Board at the last work session said he wants to make sure we get the zoning right so we don't risk potentially losing another lawsuit on the property. No, mo no formal process has been undertaken since the long range planning was adopted by council almost nine years ago to actually determine what residents want. An up to date long range plan or master plan developed with robust community input will enjoy strong public support and will provide a factual objective basis to support zoning and other decisions if challenged in court. At that vote back in 16, uh, Rich had mentioned, and I actually pulled the audio up from that, uh, and that leads me to the long range plan that we've been talking about. I believe that plan is outdated. I don't know why we're relying on it. I think we should engage the residents now and come up with a new plan based on today. What we are relying on, what the majority of council has admitted, it is flawed, it's, it is a flawed, outdated document. Let's pause, engage current residents, and move forward with a plan that enjoys strong community support. Okay, are there any questions or comments? So I have been on council for all of those same years as everybody else, and I, I've been on the land development committee since 2011, and I don't think that you will find in any of the minutes or of council or land development committee a quote from me saying that the long range plan is out of date, antiquated, unworkable, uh, but we actually use that plan to go forward and we have step by step done what was recommended in that plan and some of the points that were, you know, talked about that residents wanted in the plan we have since learned are unworkable and unfeasible due to the terrain itself of Amberley Green and where Amberley Green and Amberley itself is situated in regards to major highways. So I, I, you know, various council people say various different things when we sit here or sit in meetings and sometimes they end up in minutes, but when we speak for ourselves, we don't, we're not speaking for council. Our votes on issues and policy is how council speaks. Right. Yeah, you were not one of the ones in the majority that made a comment like that. The, and those comments were made in the minutes uh, at the vote back in April 11th of 2016. And, and the minutes give you kind of a flavor of how council comes to decisions and how committee members comes, 
comes to a decision and you can see whether we felt something was important or not important by whether it gets mentioned or amended in the up in subsequent minutes. Okay, anything else? Thank you very much. We'll now move on to committee reports. First, the Streets, Public Utilities, and Sewers Committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> the uh, Streets, Public Utilities, and Sewer Committee met uh, back in December, on December 2nd. Um, at our last council meeting, I uh, deferred uh, summarizing uh, what we, what we uh, covered at that meeting. Um, but before you, you have um, uh, two pieces that need to be acted on uh, that were uh, voted on at that committee. Uh, the first item I'd like to bring to your attention is the um, 2020 rate schedule for CT consultants. Um, as you know, CT consultants is, uh, it acts as our village engineer, um, and they've been doing, they've been providing this service uh, through another name for about uh, 25, 30 years. Um, this year, they're proposing an average rate increase of uh, 2.1, excuse me, let's see, 2.9%. Uh, and that depends on the type of service that's provided to the village. Uh, before you, you see um, uh, what's the average uh, rate increase has been over the last several years. Uh, and basically, it's fallen in that range from 2 to almost 3% over the last, I think, about 10 years. Um, uh, and so the committee reviewed, um, uh, reviewed the proposal and voted to recommend to council um, that we uh, vote to approve this uh, resolution 2020-1, first resolution of the calendar year, uh, approving and adopting the proposal for CT consultants to amend its schedule of fees for 2020. Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2020-1 approving and adopting the proposed uh, CT consultants uh, amended scheduled fees for 2020. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2020-1. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Be it noted that the resolution pa passes unanimously. Uh, second item before you is resolution 2020-2. Uh, authorizing stormwater repairs on Section Road west of Aracoma. As you know, the Village Maintenance Department performs various uh, types of repairs to stormwater catch basins throughout the village each, each year. The department also assists in developing stormwater programs and lists, and lists of smaller standalone projects in need of major repairs. Um, the stormwater repairs at 2730 Section Road were brought to the village's attention as a homeowner was making improvements to their driveway. In the process, they discovered a deteriorated catch basin and stormwater piping that needed to be repaired or replaced. Um, the maintenance department um, contacted two local contractors to receive quotes for the repairs. Uh, one came from Atleta Construction, which was the lowest and best quote in the amount of $8,950. And that was approximately $7,500 below the second quote, which was from Quality Black Topping. Um, the village has used Atleta Construction for a variety of village projects and um, village engineer recommended, certainly had no reservations uh, about moving forward with Atleta. So before you is um, committee voted and recommended to council to adopt resolution 2020-2, authorizing stormwater repairs on Section Road west of Aracoma in the amount of $8,950. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt a resolution 2020-2, authorizing the village manager to enter into a contract uh, with respect to these stormwater repairs. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2020-2. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Be it noted that the resolution passes unanimously. Uh, I'd like to share two other items that we, um, uh, we reviewed at, uh, at our committee meeting. One had to do with uh, the uh, safety of the pedestrian crosswalk at Section Road and Farm Acres Drive. Um, the committee's been d discussing this for about six months now. And uh, at our last committee meeting, um, essentially what the, the issue at that crosswalk 
is that cars are not stopping at the crosswalk. And so it presents a particular danger to people, particularly at night, but also during the day when crosswalk is used by the residents of the area. Um, and so we had asked um, uh, Chief Wallace actually to come up with potential um, fixes for that area um, and also work with the village engineer. And so um, there were three proposals that were made at the committee meeting. One was to um, add overhead lighting that would provide visibility for pedestrians, particularly at night. Another one would be a uh, pedestrian activated yellow warning light and the third was improved surface treatment on Section Road on the approach to the crosswalk. In other words, that cars would be able to have better visibility of that crosswalk. And so um, the chief recommended that we, as a first step, we go uh, with install installation of lighting at that crosswalk. And so the committee approved that. There's no action necessary by council due to the amount that's required. Uh, the second item that we reviewed at the uh, committee meeting and this was brought to our attention by uh, Mr. Ted, um, Mr. Ted Hardman, who lives at uh, 3271 East Galbraith Road. And he was concerned about the, the vehicular or the pedestrian safety um, along Galbraith Road east of Ridge. And so you see it's a three, for a good part of it, it's three lanes. And so number one, traffic moves very quickly. There's no shoulder on the road. And in fact, something I discovered a couple weeks ago, uh, for the residents who live along Galbraith Road, it's certainly dangerous to collect their mail because the mailbox basically goes to the white line that defines the border of the road. Anyway, so Mr. Hardman had asked the committee, actually it first was, I think it first came to HEW and then came to Streets. And Mr. Hardman had asked that we review the possibility of converting a three-lane road to a two-lane road and add a shoulders on both sides of Galbraith Road that could be used for safety, for you know emergency cars can pull off, um, pedestrians, bikes, things like that. Uh, Mr. Twe, who's, who's the uh, village engineer, had reviewed the proposal and, uh, and came back to us and with a number of reasons why it could be problematic. Um, first of all, the current width of the lanes is probably not ideal. Um, he had um, mentioned that the lane should, each lane should be 11 feet wide, so the width of that road should be about 33 feet without a shoulder. Currently, it's 30 feet wide, so it's not even ideal for that. Um, secondly, it would require, or at least recommended, a traffic study to determine the outcome of that type of change. Uh, we'd also have to work with Deer Park. Um, so those were, the, those were the, the two major areas of concern that Mr. Twe or a few major areas of concern Mr. Twee who's uh, uh, shared with us. It's something we may review in the future. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hardman had also contacted uh, another engineering service to provide some uh, input toward this. I believe we received, all council members received. So it's something the Streets Committee may review again in the future. Um, and that concludes the Streets Committee report. Thank you. Are there any questions? I, I, yeah. I don't have a question. But I don't have a question. I have a comment and, um, about the light at the crosswalk, right. which I think is an excellent plan. And I, I think we're very hesitant for whatever reason, to install safety lighting on our streets in Amberley, um, we're s things move very, very slowly, and particularly in areas of safety and pedestrian safety and making our streets walkable. And I, I think, you know, we're going to see that maybe there will be residents who complain about this light, and we're going to, you know, find that it's definitely not the end of the world to have a safety feature and a light in a crosswalk. And I would love to see us uh, light up the streets and some other areas as well. It's, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Well, Never one, did. Yeah, well, one, one thing, we don't. When, when, when we've been working on this, we've been very deliberate. I mean, we don't rush to judge. Ru you don't, we don't rush to judgment in terms of what's the best thing. What we really want to know is let's collect the data and let's decide on you know what would be most effective. I'm not sure if this is the end of the story for that crosswalk because lighting is going to deal with nighttime. Mm -hmm. 
and we know that crosswalk is used considerably during the daytime on the Jewish Sabbath. So there's, I, you know, we haven't, I don't think we fixed the issue, but I mean, we're moving, you know, to, to, to help the situation anyway. And with regard to the Galbraith Road, I, I know this issue has, Mr. Hardman's moved on to the We Thrive Committee with this issue, which I think is fantastic. And I, I think I would love to hear, I mean, just keep bringing creative ideas of, of making our streets safer for pedestrians to council, um, because those of us on the committees had never thought of this one. It was new, it sounded like a great idea, um, you know, when it was suggested, and it looks like it may not be, but there could be other, oh. other things, and I've recently learned that the library is going to be um, um, it, the Dil expanding in Dillonvale, it's gonna be a big deal, and more people are gonna be going there, and it'd be great to walk, I mean, from It'd be great to walk on Galbraith Road. If you live on the other side of Galbraith Road and live a half a mile from the library, you can't even walk there safely. So just keep bringing the ideas. Okay, anything else? If not, we'll move on to the Police and Fire Committee. Thank you. I just wanted to um, update on, in a regular meeting the activity of our committee since our last regular council meeting. Uh, we met one more time on December 17th to consider the emergency services contract, which was due to expire on December 31st. You will recall from my previous reports that we were having ongoing discussions with our then current providers, Deer Park Silverton and Little Miami, uh, with significant cost increases on the table and opaque processes of not understanding where things were going. Um, we, the, we sought, uh, the chief sought, the, Staff sought a, a bid from the city of Reading, and as part of the analysis of their proposal, staff put together an analysis of data on response times around the village from all the various providers to support our decision making. And we reviewed that in particular on December 17th, and ultimately it was the staff um, recommendation to go with Reading, which the committee then recommended to council. And subsequent to the committee meeting, we went immediately into the special council meeting to, uh, to vote on it so that it could be approved in time for January 1st. And so that's where we're at. Um, we did learn a lot in this process um, about emergency services, and it's an issue that we will be keeping tabs on more closely um, over the course of our five-year contract. And that concludes my report. Are there any questions? If not, we will move on to the manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. On the council meeting dates for 2020, those have been provided in the council packet uh, under the manager's report. And I'd just like to get an idea if there are any conflicts that have been identified that we need to move our council meeting dates. We did discuss this. Um, there is a suggestion that we move the March meeting um, from March 9th to a week later, March 16th. Does that work, Greg? Do we have to wait How about March 12th? Do we have it on the 12th? Or the, the 11th or 12th? How about March 11th? The Wednesday the 11th? That's fine. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, I hereby move that we uh, move the regularly scheduled March 9th meeting to March 11th, 2020. Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that the regularly scheduled March 9th, 9th meeting be moved to March 11th. Are there any, is there any discussion? If not, it has been moved and seconded that we move the regularly scheduled March meeting to March 11th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Be noted that the resolution passed unanimously. And I think all other uh, meeting dates are okay. Okay. All right. Second item I wanted to mention is uh, the mayor and I had a meeting with the new Duke representative and uh, had a discussion about a variety of, of topics 
Uh, the one that I wanted to mention, two of them I wanted to mention tonight was one in regards to an area of the village that has power outages frequently. Uh, so this was brought to Duke's attention and since then Duke has responded back uh, for the, that area of uh, North Elbrook as well as Laurel Oak. Uh, they have identified what the issues have been there and have put forth a, uh, a plan. So once I have more details on that plan and the time frame for that, I will share that with the, uh, with the residents. And then the second item that Duke made us aware of was in regards to the natural gas line that received approval from the Ohio, Ohio Power Siting Board. Um, and through their through their natural gas line application process, uh, Duke Energy uh, made us aware that they are moving forward with their plans to uh, construct the gas line and provided a letter that has been provided in your council packet that is going to certain areas that are affected by the proposed gas line and also the materials that Duke has put together that explains what this gas line entails for, for them. Um, I think that what came out of that meeting as we had those discussions was a, a uh, particular cadence of future meetings that we will hold with Duke to keep us uh, aware of the construction of that particular gas line and how that unfolds and how it is going to, how it will potentially affect uh, Amberley Village. So uh, the Duke representative has already reached out and has uh, proposed some dates uh, in which to meet so that we can uh, continue receiving information about that particular process. Uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. So on that last item, a couple things, um, and maybe the solicitor knows more than I do, but it was my understanding just uh, in following the case unrelated to that meeting, um, but that several of the jurisdictions have continued to submit um, requests for the Ohio Power Siting Board to review, to re-review, basically reopen the case and review it again. And um, the last I had heard, the uh, citizens group was, you know, still ramping up for potential litigation and legal action. So um, while Duke is moving ahead, that's on their time, they're sharing their timeline that may or may not ultimately um, sure. be the timeline and, and the outcome of that. So we're obviously want to stay close to that and to the extent you're still in, in contact with those jurisdictions. Um, I did also ask the manager today um, if, however though, given the, you know, the ongoing kind of uh, both with this project but also what we've always been told that there are, you know, potential future projects that hopefully we can have that person um, in front of a committee or that's, you know, with something that's more open to the public to have that person come and be able to answer questions from um, citizens and, um, and people, especially if there's construction impact and things to be able to make sure that there's some public meetings, uh, but also just in general that that relationship includes some public, more public uh, opportunities as well. So I, I think there's... Shouldn't be any issues with that, but stay tuned for, for that as well. And, and related to that, in the meeting that we had with Duke, you know, I, I think um, they clearly stated that they, they learned a lot of lessons from the, the, uh, the work on the, the uh, pipeline and uh, have incorporated that. Now, you know, we'll just have to hold their feet to that but they, they are committed to much better communication with the uh, residents and communities that they influence. Um, yeah, I, my comment is related to Duke as well. And I think it is worth noting that while this was a, you know, a private meeting with officials, that did not happen at all when they rolled out this pipeline in the beginning. The only reason Scott knew was because I told him because I went to one of the meetings because I was on one of the, the original proposal. I mean, it was totally out of nowhere. Um, but I was wondering if you're going to have regular meetings with them, if you could begin pressing the matter of the A line, because that's been sort of in the shadows of this project, and I, it's not. It's they've never been forthcoming about it, and it would be good to start pressing them on it. We brought up the A line. Oh, did you? Good. Okay, good. Merited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the mayor did bring up the A line, in and the, there was the no answer. Well, they no. do not have a timetable yeah. specifically for replacement. The replacement of the A line is in their long-range plan, but they do not have uh, any specific timetable at this point of when that will be done, et cetera. Okay, but, but I think 
you know, again, now that we we brought it up and we're hopefully going to have these regular meetings, we will continue to bring it up. It'll be uh, it'll be dependent on natural gas prices. Okay, any other questions for the manager? Okay, Chief, do you have a report? No. Okay. Uh, on the mayor's report, a number of items. Uh, at the last council meeting, uh, after we wor worked through the process of, for our new council term, I did pass out the uh, committee uh, assignments for um, the next council or our council term 2019 to 2021. Uh, and I would like to hereby make a motion that the council approves those committee assignments. As you will recall, the committee assignments are all the same from the previous uh, council term with one exception, and that is on the law committee, uh, Councilwoman Kamine is replacing Councilman Hattenbach on that, but all other committee assignments are the same. So I hereby move that council approves the committee assignments. Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that the committee assignments for the council term 2019-2021 are approved. Any discussion? If not, it has been moved and seconded that the uh, committee assignments for 2019-2021 be approved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? be noted that the resolution passed unanimously. Uh, next on for our, we have a number of, uh, a need to make a number of appointments because uh, terms have expired. First on the planning commission, I hereby would like to nominate Scott Wolf for the planning commission slash ZBA for a four year term uh, which would commence at the beginning of 2020. Second. Yeah. And Scott, I, Scott has served on the planning commission for a number of years and has, has done a great job, in my opinion. So, uh, you know, I think he's a, he uh, will provide the, st the stability as we look at some very important issues over the, the next few years. So. It has been moved and seconded that we appoint Scott Wolf to the Planning Commission for a four-year term commencing uh, 1st of January, 2020. Um, I am going to abstain from this vote. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Be it noted that the uh, resolution passes unanimously with six votes and that counts or the vice mayor recused herself because of a conflict. I would next like to nominate uh, Bill Doring and John Chaikin to continue to serve on the Stormwater Advisory Committee uh, for four-year terms. Again, uh, both Bill and John Chaikin have, have served on the Stormwater Advisory Committee. The Stormwater Advisory, Advisory Committee is not a decision-making body, but it performs a very critical role in reviewing all of our stormwater work and making a recommendation to council uh, with respect to that work. Uh, Bill and John have both been serving for the last few years on this and John in fact is the chair of the stormwater advisory committee. So I hereby nominate Bill Doring and John Chaikin to continue to serve on the stormwater advisory committee and, and appoint them to four year terms. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we had, we nominate Bill Doring and John Chaikin to the Stormwater Advisory Committee. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it has been moved and seconded that we nominate Bill Doring and John Chaikin to the Stormwater Advisory Committee for four-year terms. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Be it noted that the resolution passes unanimously. Next, on the Environmental Stewardship Committee, uh, we are I hereby nominate uh, Mary Stillpass, Susan Cohen, Pete Duffy, Kathy Kramer, Susan Rissover, and Susan, uh, the, our charter requires a member of the Planning Commission to be on the um, Environmental Stewardship Committee, and Susan has performed that role. Rob Schmelling and Roger Tennis to the Environmental Stewardship Committee. The Environmental <laughs> Stewardship Committee, again, is a 
uh, not a decision-making body. It is an advisory body to the council. Uh, we, the committee is, is a little bit smaller. A number of people, um, you know, have, have not been attending, and so we're reducing, but we really would like new members in the future. Uh, this, this nomination is for the council term, um, and so each, count, each, each new council term makes new appointments to the Environmental Stewardship Committee. Um, so as I said, I hereby nominate Mary Stopas, Susan Cohen, Pete Dubby, Kathy Kramer, <coughs> Susan Rissover, Rob Schmeling, and Roger Tennis to the Environmental Stewardship Committee, and all those people are currently members. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we nominate uh, or we approve Mary Stillpass, Susan Cohen, Pete Duffy, Kathy Kramer, Susan Rissover, Rob Schmeling, and Roger Tennis to the Environmental Stewardship Committee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Be it noted that the resolution passes unanimously. And finally, um, we have an income tax review board. It doesn't meet very often. In fact, I don't think it has met in quite a few years. Um, the, it's three members, two are council appointments, one is an appointment by the, the village manager. Uh, the village manager has appointed Rick Kay, uh, and Rick is already on the, serves on this uh, uh, board, and um, the village manager has, has nominated him again to continue. And also, Judy Barron and Ben Hunt also currently serve on the uh, income tax review board, and so I would hereby like to um, make a recommendation that we continue that those people continue on the income tax review board. So I just have a question, um, Scott. What what do what does this board do? If there is an appeal, excuse me. If there is an appeal on a tax issue, this board is what that appeal would go to. So it's an outlet for somebody who does not agree with the tax administrator's determination of a tax situation. And, and I think it's a good indicator that our tax administrator is doing a great job that the Income Tax Review Board yeah. has not had to meet right. um, so that those appeals have not come forward. So um, Again, I move that Judy Barron and Ben Hunt continue on the income tax review. We should raise their salary. No, second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve Judy Barron and Ben Hunt to the income tax review board. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Be it noted that the resolution passes unanimously. And that concludes my mayor's report. We'll now move on to new business. Um, I wanted to bring up for discussion, I know we were all in receipt of an email from a member of the Human Rights Commission regarding the possibility of creating some yard signs with an inclusive message about our village. Um, we kind of discourage yard signs, but this seems kind of important, and I, I just wanted to bring that up in an open forum where we could perhaps provide some direction which would allow them to move forward. Um, I had suggested in my response to the individual who sent the message that maybe there could be, like it could be a limited time period campaign so we don't have yard signs deteriorating in yards over months and months, and maybe it could be an annual thing so people could save the signs and bring them out every whatever. Um, that's not what I'm proposing necessarily here, but I would, I just would like to get some hopefully a consensus that would allow them to move forward. It wasn't clear to me what role, um, what role we have in this. Um, because when the Human Rights Commission was set up, I mean, they're tasked to do X, Y, and Z and given a budget. But if I recall, there was never, I don't know if there was anything in this ordinance that was, or this, this commission that was created. As I understand that, that where we are at is they want to do something that the actual policies of the village that exist be consistent are, with are hindering them, and in order for a policy of the village to be changed, that's, that's us that has to do that. Well, but the policy has to do with commercial signage, right? No. So, 
help me with that. The, the concern that was expressed is that staff deals with complaints about signs throughout the village as, as visual clutter. And a good example is the PRM signs. I mean, it generates calls when those signs come out. And those are the types of signs that typically will be out for extended periods of time. And the village doesn't have a good way of regulating those types of signs. And what I was a bit concerned about is if we are promoting a particular sign and we're going to be agitating residents by putting out signs that could be viewed as visual clutter, I don't want us to be stepping into a situation where it's going to backfire on, on, on the village. Um, and my comment was just to, if there's, a, if there's a time frame for the signs to be used or if it's an all year thing, um, just you know, take some of those types of things into consideration. But from a, a standpoint of, uh, of council's role, I think council member Conway is just asking, is, do we want to provide some direction to the uh, Human Rights Commission? Well, right. yeah, and, and to me, the, the message that the Human Rights Commission wants to put out there is a very powerful, mm -hmm. important message. And, you know, I think we might be able to do things on the website, social media, maybe, you know, the banner that mm -hmm. we put up for the, but, you know, maybe what we could do is refer this to the Public Outreach Committee uh, to look at, at a, you know, a best way to communicate this. Um, well, are you suggesting that the outreach committee debate how it should be done? Because that sounds like what the Human Rights Commission is doing. It's to me, it's we, we're going to we need to provide a framework for them to act, not take their project from them. I mean, do you understand what I mean? Because what you just said sounds like take this project and do no, it. I don't, I'm not saying take it, you know, the Public Outreach Committee could, could work with the, with the Human Rights Commission to, to figure out the best way to, to get this message out. Uh, I would go either way. I mean, I would put a sign in my yard, um, you know, or I would do it as part as, of a coordinated campaign. Um, I, the way I see it, the Human Rights Commission came up with this idea, I think it's a good idea, um, and they really are asking us how to implement the idea. Um, I mean, I think if we do it quickly, maybe they want to do it during the month of June, or maybe there is a Human Rights Month or something. Um, I don't know. Or maybe, you know, there's an outbreak, uh, maybe there's a suit, shooting in a synagogue again, God forbid, and that would be a great time to put out a sign like that. I mean, it, it seems like we could be supportive of a coordinated campaign without stepping on their toes, and that might even be more powerful than, say, having the signs out, you know, forever until they fall apart. The signs plus the banner and plus maybe 30 days of a particular month. But I would definitely want to invite the Human, Human Rights Commission to come to a public outreach meeting and, and we can work together on it. I don't, I, I mean, I don't feel like I'm on the committee no. too. I just was hoping we could empower them and give them some direction tonight to mm -hmm. go to a committee, then we're talking weeks. I mean, I, if that's what council wants to do, that's fine. I mean, well, I, let's get a meeting pretty quick. I'm meeting with Scott um, this week, I think. We have a meeting on the agenda, and I'm, I'll just say calendar it. I just have a, a thought. You know, I think when the proposal was first made was, I don't know, how many signs or something like that. I mean, it could be a lot of signs, initial proposal. Um, Given that you know the message is pretty powerful, very positive, it's a real statement. You know where the village stands. I mean, we could start with something small, and see how the residents re respond. It could be 50 signs. Who wants to put them in their front yard and get an idea about you know what's the response to that? So so we're not you know blasting the whole village, uh, plastering the whole village, and we get a, a sense, uh, you know, from the community what they think about it. So, no, just to, this way, just they can act on something, you know, immediately. So, and, and, you know, the vice mayor, I assume, will report back to us at the next council meeting what you, what you determined in the committee. Yeah, and hopefully the Human Rights Commission representatives will come and, you know, be able to tell more about this campaign. I mean, I think we're just going to talk about parameters, but this is their campaign. Yep. Right. But then it will need to come back to the council before they can act, right? 
Depending on what. Yeah. I mean, if it's something that can be, go ahead and, and you know, you know, if it's something to do with, you know, a banner out there or whatever, you know, that's something the village manager can can do. Back to council's part of a committee report, but no action may be right. required. Hopefully, right. we'll report next month. Okay. Any other new business? If not, um, we we started. Uh, at our December meeting, the annual review of the uh, village manager, and the intent is that we would like to complete that this evening. Uh, so I hereby would like to make a motion that we adjourn into executive session for the purpose of the annual review of the village manager, including a review of the manager's compensation. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we adjourn into executive session for the purpose of the annual uh, performance appraisal of the village manager and review of the village manager's compensation. Please call the roll. Richard Bardak. Yes. Peg Conway. Yes. Ed Hattenbach. Yes. Alita K. Mine. Yes. Tom Muthing. Yes. Ray Warren. Yes. Natalie Wolf. Yes. And be it noted that we're adjourning into executive session at 731. Uh, for those residents uh, that are present, uh, we will be uh, doing the executive session. We will return to a general session afterwards, but it will be just to adjourn the meeting. Uh, we will, there will be a report out. There will be an ordinance with respect to uh, what we determine uh, at the, the next meeting with respect to pay or whatever. So this is not done in, you know, behind closed doors. It's, this is part of uh, the public's business, and so you will see a report out, and the public will be aware of what was determined.